it's not Monty Don. Don't turn off. You've got you've got the right blog. It's Noelle Adler again uh, speaking speaking to you through this blog uh, on behalf of um, Somerset Counselling Centre. So it does look like Gardens uh, World, but it's not. I want to talk to you today about the greenhouse, faith, and overwhelmment. Don't switch off. I promise you there is a link between all those things. But I couldn't resist bringing you to my favourite place. Um, and that's the allotment, as you can see behind me. And in the allotment, we have a greenhouse, which is one of my biggest um, prides and joys and one of my top favourite places. And of course, I'm wearing my top favourite outfit. Um, so I just wanted to share all that with you. And I wanted to talk about the greenhouse today because for me it is a symbol of all the things I've been talking about, which is waiting, faith, overwhelmment, impossibility. And it was a grotty old greenhouse that we saw for three as long as we could take it down, transport it across Devon and resurrect it. So it only took two days to dismantle and then we have all these lovely little pieces of aluminium which we very, very carefully cleaned and labelled and it's all going well and we're going to put it up in February. And uh, the three storms is Chiara and somebody else and somebody else over three weekends never gets put up. We know we need help with this, neither of us can manage it ourselves. And our friends go, yeah, we'll help you when the storm's over, we'll help you. And of course what happens is the first decent time in March we could put the greenhouse up, there's lockdown. And quite rightly, our friends are socially distancing. So I said, look, I'll, 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 I'll do it, I'll do it. I'll just go up to the allotment, I'll do it myself. It can't be that, we've labelled everything, it can't be that difficult. Well, I stood here and it was like pick up sticks. And I could feel this well of fury coming up. I picked up one thing, made no sense, threw it down, pick it up another. And then, of course, it just got more and more muddly. I became more and more impossible. The neighbour, our, our dear allotment neighbour, I could see him moving away. And to my great shame, um, as a middle-aged woman, I wanted to have a tantrum. I could just lie down among the parsnips and start screaming my head off. And it's only social nicety that stopped me, really, um, and the fact somebody else was on the allotment. So I didn't do that, but I did start welling up. And then I, I felt really cross with myself because I thought, well, this is a greenhouse. You are, you know, you're alive, you're well, you're in a beautiful part of England, get a grip. It doesn't really help because of course then you just feel guilty on top of feeling very stupid. So what we did is we abandoned pick up sticks and the greenhouse and I had to shelve the thousands of fantasies I had about this glass house and what we were going to do and what we were going to grow. And it was going to be so lush, oh my goodness, it was it was paradise lost. Uh, and I got over the disappointment because I thought there may be another year and we'll put it up next spring, which felt like an eon away, as you can imagine. Then a friend of ours said, I tell you what, I'll put it up in my garden and then we'll transport it in its frame to your greenhouse. So we deposited in all these little bits and in three seconds, he said, oh yes, I see how that goes together. I'm like, oh, you're joking, but he did. Two days he directed it. Then the four of us, following social distancing, because it is um, eight by six, so they took the front, we took the back, we had it on a skateboard in the front and a wheelbarrow in the back, and at night we rushed it through the streets of Budley Salterton and put it on this platform and rushed off again in our social distancing way, touching nothing, and it was like the Easter miracle. And all our friends on the allotment came up the next day and were like, that wasn't there yesterday. And to this day, they think it's a little miracle. So what happened was we then put the glass in and here we are. And I just I thought I might show you some of the very precious things that are growing here. So beans, glorious beans, squashes. There's the tomatoes. I don't know, can you see the, oopsie, oopsie. These things are not easy, are they? There, those are the tomatoes and the tomato flowers. Can you believe it? That's just marvelous. I'm also growing marigolds. And I wanted to show you a marigold seed. Can you believe is that? It's like a little match. I thought somebody was joking. And now look. Amazing. So there's, there's a little um, story, I think, which is about disappointment, faith, resurrection. 
and also the terrible result of overwhelmment. And I know during this period that most of us, all of us, feel terribly overwhelmed um, with nothing in particular. I, I, I think it's just, can we possibly take in this situation? Can we possibly take in this information? Can we possibly do this and hold a job and be a mother and be homeschooling and be everything we're meant to be? And the answer is probably not. And what I've noticed in lockdown and I include myself in this, is that I think we lock down everything. So not only do we self-isolate, we lock down our feelings and our thoughts, and we lock down the passageway between our hearts and our heads. Because as a therapist, um, and I think most counsellors would say this, that the roots of panic, the roots of overwhelmment, those little seeds, like the marigold seeds, are sown a long time ago. It takes a lot, a long time, for us to get into the storm of overwhelmment, a panic attack, a tantrum. It, it, it's a gradual thing. That, and those little seeds are the seeds we work on in therapy so that the graduation is much slower, the possibility of stopping it is much slower. And one of the seeds um, is perfectionism. And a very strict internal policeman, you should. And I got one of those, I've got a very strong policeman. I have a very strong martyr in me and I have a very strong saint in me. You, you should be better than this, Noelle. Um, you should overcome this. You should be able to manage this. You shouldn't be throwing a tantrum. You're 56 years old, stop it. And of course, <laughs> the moment we can stop lecturing ourselves and we can allow ourselves some loosening some feeling just feel the disappointment feel the pain feel the sadness you're allowed it we're all allowed it of course the likelihood of overwhelmment is less and I know that that's a quite an intricate process and quite a long process in the short term I've also been thinking well what would help in the middle of a tantrum in the middle of overwhelmment what would help and one of the things is to literally, physically go stop. You know, I see mums doing it with kids in the street. Stop, freeze. And they do this. And, and it's a similar thing. Is we have to just say to ourselves, this, this is not working. This is not working. We are, we are on the wave of anxiety. And when we're on the wave of anxiety, it's never a good end. So stop. The famous breathe. I'm a great stamper. I believe stamping helps us to ground ourselves. I believe it helps bilateral stimulation and that helps our brains process a little bit more. So stop. Breathe. Stamp. Personally speaking, and I don't know that this is the same for everybody, I love growling. I think it's a wonderful thing. And so a little bit of a growl kind of releases, releases some of the stress, some of the tension, some of the fury, some of the infuriations. It's not good at being thwarted, really not good at being thwarted. And then after that, to calm the brain down, and we use this a lot in trauma work, is what we call proprioception. And it's why people, when they drive, say they can, it's a slight dissociation, but it, it, it allows the anxiety systems and the rage systems in the brain just to calm down. And when I say proprioception, what I mean is, look out, count the rows of lettuce, look at the marigold plants. These are my leeks. Look at those, look at the seed heads. Just stop and look out. And you'll find there is a there is a loosening. So if you're at your computer and things are really not working and there are too many demands and there's not enough resource and there's been too much internal lockdown, stop. Breathe, stamp, growl, count the dots on the curtain, count the patterns on the carpet, and something will move, something will change. And it's even possible there'll be a little bit of a greenhouse miracle. So that's it for me today. I, I hope this is of some help.
but it's been lovely to speak to you. Go well, stay safe, and you'll see me again at some point.